Hello, my dear students and the rest of the learners. Welcome to part 15 of that seven. In a seven part series of tutorials in computer structure and programming unit in C and Pascal. This is section one of three in the topic control structures. My name is MemeJM, or you can simply call me Emily Swap. In this tutorial, I'm going to look at the meaning and the importance of control structures, the introduction to types of control structures, and I will pay attention on the first control structure by the name sequence, whereby I will demonstrate some examples of pseudocode, flowchart, and sample programs in C and Pascal implementing the sequence control structure. We commence with the meaning and the importance of control structures. Control structures are a control flow statements whose execution results in a choice being made as to which of two or more paths should be followed. Control statements deal with situations where processes are to be repeated several number of times or decisions have to be made. In some situations also, there is need to carry out a logical test and then take some action or particular action that depends upon the outcome of the test. Also, a condition may arise in which a particular group of statements is chosen from several available groups. Decision-making is therefore selection of one of the various available alternatives. In other ones, we select which alternative path to follow depending on the outcome of some condition. In real life, human beings are faced with various challenges or problems that need appropriate solutions. Thus, a person always evaluates all the available solutions to a problem and then decides which actions or steps should be taken based on the alternative chosen. Therefore, control structures are of vital importance because they determine which actions or steps needs to be taken to solve a particular problem depending on the alternative taken and how actions needs to be carried out. The exit of one control statement section can be attached to another by connecting the exit point of one control statement to the entry point of the next. This is called control statement stacking. It is implemented through what we call the control statement nesting. Let's now look at the types of control structures. Program control structures are of three types in most programming languages. These are the sequence control structure, the selection control structure, and the iterative, iteration or looping control structures. The sequence control structure is used in a situation whereby program statements are executed one after the other in the order in which they appear in the program. Selection control structure is used in situations whereby a certain action is taken depending on a condition that has been met. While iteration or iterative control structure, which we also call looping, is used in a situation whereby an instruction or a group of instructions are to be executed again and again until a certain condition is fulfilled without the programmer having to record the instructions or the statements. In this tutorial, I'm going to pay attention to the sequence control structure and then 
the selection or selective control structure will be covered in part 16. In this series, while I will cover the iterative control structures in part 17 of this series. So what is sequence control structure? Sequence control structure is a situation where statements are executed one after the other in the exact order in which they appear in the program. That is, from the very first top line instruction and proceeding one line after the other, one line by line up to the end of the code. Therefore, sequential program execution enables the computer to perform tasks that are arranged sequentially and consecutively one after the other in the code. In sequence structure, an action or event leads to the next ordered action in a predetermined order. In sequence structure, an action or event leads to the next ordered action in a predetermined order. The sequence can contain any number of actions, but no action can be skipped in the sequence. The program, when run, must perform each action in the exact order in which it is content within the program or within the source code without skipping any action or a statement and without branching off to any other action except the one which is just following the instruction or the action that is being acted upon at that given time. And therefore, when the program is ran, it must perform action in order with no possibility of skipping an action or on branching off to another action. Most of the programs coded so far in my presentations from part one up to this part that I am presenting now have been implemented using the sequence structure. In other words, any of the programs that I've used in my demonstrations and illustrations in my presentations for the previous series of tutorials in computer structure and programming unit have purely been implementing the sequence structure. The syntax for this structure is therefore as follows. We have the start and then we execute the first statement, second statement, then the statement, and we proceed in that order until we execute the very first or the very last, the very last statement, which I'm calling the ninth statement, and then the program ends. And therefore, purely or simply, what this syntax informs you is that when a program is executing or when the processor is executing a sequence control structure, the instructions are executed one after the other in their order of arrangement within the source code without skipping any statement or without making any selection. The following is therefore an example of a pseudo code, a flowchart, and programs in C and Pascal implementing, implementing this structure. So the pseudo code is start. Set the pi to 3.143. Then display the message or print the message enter in the as of a circle. Then input the radius. Then calculate area by multiplying what has been entered as radius by itself and then by the value of pi and the results assign them to the memory location called area. In other words, compute area. Calculate area by
by multiplying pi times radius times radius. Then display the area or print the area and stop. My dear students and the rest of the learners, this pseudocode, as you can see, is pseudocode for a program that calculates or computes the area of a circle based on the radius that has been entered. So that is a set of statements, or that is how the program will compute area of a circle. So this is its flowchart. The flowchart for a program that computes or calculates the area of a circle for any given radius. So we have the start, and then we assign 3.143 to the memory location called the pi. Then we request the user to enter radius, and we read radius and assign it in the memory location called radius. From there, we compute the value, or we compute the area of the circle by multiplying what has been entered as radius by itself, and then we multiply by the value of pi. And the results, we assign them in the memory location called the area. And then we display the area and stop the execution. So that is the flowchart. Let's now look at sample program in Pascal and in C. So sample program in Pascal. So this program is for calculating the area of a circle. That is a comment. And then we have program handler, which is program circle. Kindly, my dear students and the rest of the learners, remember what we said concerning the syntax and we discussed about the program structure in Pascal. It's therefore important to remind yourself about what we said concerning writing of comments, as well as how we write each statement, including the program structure in Pascal. So my program is called SACO, program SACO. And then we declare a memory location called pi, and we initialize it with a value. And therefore, this statement, this statement declares a memory location called pi that will hold a value, a numeric value that has a decimal point, which will not be changing throughout the program execution. And then we initialize that memory location with a value. So we assign into it, or we store into it, 3.142. And therefore, just as I said before, this statement performs two functions. Number one, it declares a memory location called pi that will hold a value which will remain constant up to the end of execution. So it is called const pi. And then we initialize that memory location by storing into it a value which is 3.142. Then we declare two variable locations or two memory locations that will be holding various values that will be changing based on what is entered. And therefore, these variables are radius and area that are going to hold values that have decimal fractions that is real. And then we begin. The first statement is to request the user to enter radius of the circle. So right line, display the statement, enter radius of the circle 
on the screen. And then allow the user to enter a value for alias. So print a value entered by the user and drop one line below the value entered. So print the value for alias and move on to the next line. Then calculate the area, compute the area of the circle by getting the value stored in memory location called radius, multiply by itself, and then multiply the answer with the value or with the content of memory location called pi. The overall results, assign them or store them in the memory location set assigned called area. Then display this message on the screen. Write this message on the screen. The area of this circle is what is stored in the memo location called area, but formatted into six characters. Or let it occupy at least six spaces, or at most six spaces, with the two of those characters being reserved for the fractional part. In other words, Pick what is the memory location called area, display it on the screen with at least six characters, maximum of six characters, but then ensure that two of those characters are reserved for the fractional part. So the fractional part of the decimal part should not exceed two characters. So the area of this circle is what is memory location called area. So if what is the memory location called area is, for example, 30.32, 30.32, then this statement will read as follows. The area of this circle is 30.32. And then let the cursor move on to the next line. That is what right line means. And end the program. That is the end of the program. What about in C? So, just as I said before, this is how we write a comment in C. Fun slash asterisk program to compute area of a circle. And it is called circle.c or saved as circle.c. Asterisk, fun slash. That's one way of commenting or writing comments in C. Then hash include studio, studio dot h. This is a preprocessor pre directive that informs our compiler or the processor to load the functions stored in the header file called studio standard input output header file, which contains functions for inputting and outputting. And I said we use or we declare or we include this header file in situation where we are going to be making use of input like the keyboard and also output devices such as the monitor. Then void main, this is the function, main function. And then we have that uh, left brace. Then we declare memory location called pi, which is going to hold the values that will be having fractional parts. That's why it is double. And that value will remain constant. It will not be changing during program execution. And therefore, we call it const. So const double pi. And then we assign it to it or we initialize it with a value, which is 3.142. So const double pi equals to 3.142. So this statement means or reads as follows. Declare a memory location called pi that will be holding value, which is not going to be changing during program execution. And that value will be 3.142. In other words, it will have a decimal point. 
So, declare a memo location or set a memo location assigned the code pi that will accommodate the values that have decimal points or fractional part, and that value will not be changing. It will be a single value and it will remain without changing. So that's why it is const. And that value or that memo location initialize it or store into it a value which is 3.142. And then set another memo location aside, two memo locations aside, one called area, another one called radius, and both of them will hold data of type real, or in other words, data that has fractional parts. So double, double radius, comma, area, semicolon. And then display the following message on the screen. Print if, print the following message on the screen. Enter the radius of the circle and drop one line. So whatever will be entered will be entered on the next line. The cursor will be blinking on the next line. That is what backslash n means. That is sequence character n, escape sequence character n. And then read this value. Read a value that will be entered. And that value should be stored in the memo location called radius. And it is of type double. So percentage percent LF is an identifier for double data type. So read the value entered by the user on the screen, which is expected to have a decimal point on decimal fraction or a fractional part. Read that value, store it in the memory location record, read yes. And then pick what is the memory location record, read yes, multiply by itself. And then the answer multiplied by the content of the memory location record, pi. The overall result assign it in the memory location called area or store it in the memory location called area. And then display the following message on the screen. Print if the area of the circle is area, but format this content of the memory location called area into six characters or six positions or six spaces, but assign two of those characters to the fractional part. So the decimal point part of the fractional part should not exceed two characters. And then end the program. That's the purpose of the right embrace. And with that, my dear students and the rest of the learners, we have come to the end of the sequence control structure. Kindly proceed to part 16 to listen to the, uh, the, the selection control structure. So continue section two of three in this topic. Congratulations for learning section one, section one of three of the topic control structures. You can also access section two and three of this topic, other topics in the computer structure and programming unit, as well as other computer or ICT videos by clicking or tapping on MLSWAP ICT YouTube channel below this video. You can also visit MLSWAP Life Skills YouTube channel for free life skills, motivational and inspirational resources. To subscribe to the channel, tap on subscribe button below this video in YouTube if it's not currently reading as subscribed. For any further correspondence, kindly write it to us through the email mlswap at gmail Dot com. Thank you very much for listening to me. Let's meet in part 16 of this series of tutorials to learn about the selection control structure. God bless.